Coming up on this edition of Able Den on Air, we talk about Ludwig von Beethoven, his life, his challenges, and what he did to overcome those challenges. All that and much more when Able Den on Air starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Able Den on Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I've always been your host, Lawrence Siler. Arlene is not here today. We focus on abilities, not the disabilities. Um, you know, despite the disabilities. On today's um, program, we focus, we um, will focus on Ludwig von Beethoven, his challenges being deaf and what he did to overcome that uh, deafness. I myself, um, just to let everybody know, I myself, I have a um, hearing challenge, but I'm going to be getting a hearing aid. So, but uh, within the next couple of shows, we will uh, talk about um, the history of deafness and what people can do to overcome that deafness uh, through trials and tribulations and um, advocacy as well. Um, let's uh, go through the life and times of Ludwig van Beethoven. Ludwig van, Te Be Lu Ludwig van Beethoven, um, uh, he, uh, he was born the 17th of December uh, in the year 1770, and he passed away March 26, 1827, and he was a German composer and pianist. What? He was one of the most revered figures in the history of Western music. His works, his works rank amongst the most performed of the classical music repertoire and span the, the transition from the classical period to the Romantic era in, in classic music. Beethoven's career has conventionally divided into early, middle, and late periods. He, <clears throat> his early period during where he forged his craft is particularly considered to have lasted until 1802. His early period, which he Fortress Craft, okay, hold on. Um, this period was in the middle and showed, showed an individual development uh, from the styles of Joseph Hayden and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and is sometimes characterized as heroic. During, the time, during this time, he began to grow increasingly deaf in his late period from 1812 to 1827. He, he extended his innovations to musical form and expression. Born in, born in Bonn, Germany, Beethoven displayed his musical talent at, at a young age. He was initially taught intensively by his father, Johann von Beethoven, and later by Christian Gottlieb Neef. Under Neef's tutelage in 1783, he published his first work, a, a set of keyboard variations. He found relief from a dysfunctional home life with his family, um, his family of, of Helen von Brunswick, which, whose children he loved bef uh, and befriended and taught piano. At age 21, he moved to Vienna and subsequ subsequently, su subsequently <clears throat> began, his, began his bass and studied composition with Hayden. Um, Beethoven gained his reputation as a, as a, as a virtuoso 
pianist and soon patronized Carl, um, Carl Luis and, and Prince Lewinsky for compositions which resulted in his Opus One Piano Trios. His earliest work, which he accorded to Opus Opus in 1795. His major um, um, orchestra work, the first symphony, first premiered in 1800s, and his first set of string quartets was published in 1801. Despite his hearing deteriorating during this period, he continued to conduct premiering the, first, the third and fifth symphonies of 1804 and 1808, respectively. His violin concerto appeared in 1806. His last piano concerto number five, Opus, um, opus 73, known as The Emperor, dedicated to his frequent patron, Archduke Rudolf of Austria premiered in 1811 without Beethoven as a soloist. He almost completely he was almost completely deaf by 1814 and he gave up performing and appearing in public. He he described his problems with health and unfulfilled personal life in two letters, the Hockenstock testament. Uh, uh, testament, sorry, the the Hockenstock testament in 1802 to his brothers, an unsent love letter to to an unknown, uh, immortal, beloved. Uh, he sent he he sent a love letter to his unknown beloved. Um, person he was in love with called uh, the um, the piece of music was called The Immortal Beloved in 1812. After 1810 he, he, he increased less socially and he was uh, less socially involved. Beethoven composed many of his admired works including later symphonies, mature chamber music, and later piano sonatas. His only opera, Fidello, first performed in 1805, was, was revised to his final version in 1814. He composed the Misa uh, Solo Mist between 1819 and 1823. His final symphony, number nine, one of the first examples of choral symphony between 1822 and 1824. Um, he, 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 he has written his last string quartets, including the Gross Fugue, 1825 to 1826 were among the final achievements of his life. His early life and education, Beethoven was known as Ludwig van Beethoven, a musician from a town of, of uh, Michelin in the Austrian, Austrian um, Duch of Brabant, which was, is now the Flemish region of Belgium. Whom he moved to Bonn. He moved to Bonn at age 21. Ludwig was employed as a bass singer to the uh, at the court of Clemens August Archbishop, um, Elector um, Elector of Cologne. Eventually, rising to become in, to become in, in 1761, um, and hence 
a permanent musician in a barn. The, the portrait he commissioned of himself towards the end of his life remained displayed by his grandson's rooms and a uh, talisman and his, musical, and his musical heritage. Ludwig had two sons, um, the younger of whom Johann worked in tenor at the same uh, musical establishment and gave keyboard and violin lessons to his supplement to supplement his income. Johann married um, Magdalene Kovic uh, in 1767. She was the daughter of of Henrik, um, 1701 to 1751, who was the head chef of the court um, of Johann Philip. Philip the Ninth of of Wallersdorf and um, Archbishop of Trier. Beethoven was born of this marriage in Bonn, and which is now Beethoven's house and museum. There is no authentic record to this date, but the registry of baptism in the Catholic parish. Um, of St. Remigus, um, December 17, 1770, survives the custom of the region at the time to carry out the baptism of 24 hours of birth. Um, there was a consensus in which Beethoven himself agreed that his birth was the 16th of December, but no documentary was proof of this. Um, and um, by the way, on Wikipedia, which is at www.wikipedia.org, uh, you can look up uh, Ludwig von uh, Beethoven. And um, but let's go into more of Beethoven's deafness. Beethoven was not born deaf, but he gradually became deaf. Although his deafness did not become total, he did not become deaf, completely deaf until 1819. The first symptoms of the impairment manifested before 1800. Early on, Beethoven reported hearing buzzing and ringing in his ears. So, um... According to the California Symphony, www.californiasymphony.org, uh, um, the, the whole story of Beethoven's deafness, how he dealt with deafness, uh, is one of the great stories of humanity, just not music. Um, this is coming from the California Symphony.org um, by music director Donato uh, 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 Cabrera. Imagine directing an orchestra in which you can't hear, a soundless piano for staring for a staring audience. Um, many know the national composer Ludwig van Beethoven, who struggled with deafness, but many don't know how much a struggle it was. Beyond composing, without Hearing a note, Beethoven grappled with living in the 1800s when few understood deafness, hindering his ability to communicate uh, his work as a musician and find a place to live. How he dealt with his deafness is one of the great stories of humanity, just not music. Losing sound. Beethoven began losing his hearing in his mid-twenties. Although building a reputation as a musician and a composer, the cause of deafness remains a mystery. Though his modern analysis of DNA um, revealed 
um, health issues among large amounts of lead in his system. At the time, people ate off lead plates. They just didn't know back then. Continuing to compose um, and conduct, he changed lodgings. He changed lodgings constantly in Vienna, which could be due to Beethoven's landlords. Frustrations with him pounding on the piano all of the hours. Beethoven even continued performing publicly as a musician, which was necessary for composers of the age. That's how they got their pieces out, not just composing, but performing. For the longest time, he didn't want to reveal his deafness because he believed justifiably that it would ruin his career. His condition didn't go unnoticed. But however, composer Louis Spohr reacted to watching Beethoven rehearse on the piano in 1814. The, the music was unintelligible unless one could look through the piano fort part. I was, um, uh, I was deeply saddened by a hard fate, uh, Beethoven said. Once hearing he was fully gone, deaf by age 45, Beethoven's lost his public life with it, giving up, giving up performing and public appearances. Not only, but, but as he allowed only to select friends visit him, communicating through written conversations in notebooks. His deafness forced him to become very private, an insular person over time, composting in, uh, composing in silence. A common question um, on how Beethoven continued to compose without his hearing, but that was likely too difficult. Music is a language with rules. Knowing the rules of how music is made, he could sit at his desk and compose a piece of music without hearing it. Beethoven changed um, how, as he, re as he retreated from public life, he once was vivacious um, piano, uh, piano, his vivacious piano sonatas began to take a darker tone. His famous Sixth Symphony also reflects on different life and deafness. Um, also known as Pastoral Symphony, his musical work conveys the piece of the countryside where Beethoven escaped life after losing hearing. In terms of his deafness, this was an important symphony reflecting the importance of life as him being an individual and his sanity of being in this, uh, being in the country. Um, this article was uh, done by the California Symphony dot org. Um, we have a couple of minutes before we end. Before we end, uh, I would like to give a little commentary. Um, it's extremely important, despite your challenge, despite your disability, we must um, learn how to overcome deafness, how to overcome blindness. Yes. Um, according to Beethoven's story, he gave up and just uh, didn't um, really do anything after that. We cannot give up as a people, as a group. We must, despite our challenges, get a job. We must 
learn about um, uh, how to mobilize and do, do more things and become more independent. Because if we don't become more independent, we could lose our ability for, um, you know, it leads into things like depression. It leads into things like uh, not uh, doing things for yourself. So uh, while Beethoven was a great person and he did uh, things uh, to um, make, um, make life culturally better for people by his music, we must be powerful enough in our spirit to do things for ourselves. And with that, uh, with that, I leave you. Uh, thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Den on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Please be more independent and learn about uh, learn about independence. It's never um, good not to be independent. We must be more independent for ourselves and for life. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Thank you for listening to this edition, important edition of the history of Beethoven. See you next time on the next edition of Abel Den on Air. Slowly, slowly. That's a drawing of Beethoven.